everyone. Not it's it, it's for everyone, but especially sales. Especially salesperson. Yes, because it, it reminds you of your independence. You're out there fighting every day for your independence. All right. You know? Getting new well, customers, starting well, from zero every day. Beautiful. Happy fifth, everyone. Let's. You got one life for crying out loud. You might as well just give it all you got. The Deej, Dan Jordan. Your daily dose of reality. Your daily dose of the Deej. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I need my daily dose of the Deej. I make the news. I don't watch the news. I'm a leader. The Sales Energizer, Dan Jordan. Listen, don't worry how to sell, baby. Worry about why people buy. And it's fun. You don't need a five-hour energy. All you need is... The Sales Energizer. Just when I think it's not going to be as fun as the one before, each one gets successful, successfully, successfully better. Success. What's the word I'm looking for? What's it going to take to get you into this car today, huh? And now, please welcome the Sales Energizer, Dan Jordan. Boom! (laughs) That's exactly it. Do that. Let's do that. (laughs) <laughs> Boom! Is it wrong to make yourself laugh? I mean, I laugh at myself on a regular, on a regular basis. <laughs> There's a couple of things that are Fourth of July related. First of all, at the very end. You, uh, it's boom. That's exactly. It's like you know. So there's that, right? The boom of the yes. of the fireworks. And I have these little banners that I pop in at times. Uh, and one I kept from your Amazon show uh, because I I felt like it <laughs> it, it lives in perpetuity r- whether you're going live on Amazon or not. And it's this banner that I made when you fell in the hammock in your in your oh. uh, in your house, and it said, "Don't try this at home." <laughs> and I thought, okay, well, that's, you know, that kind of makes sense for the 4th of July. Like, yes. don't try this at home. Don't blow off any fingers or anything on, on the 4th with some fireworks. So I, did you do any fireworks? I, I didn't. Um, we had, a, we had a house full of people and some of them went wow. to go look at, at fireworks. I didn't buy any of the, any of the local yeah. stuff. I've done that in the past. I've done some yeah. stuff that I felt a little bit nervous about after I lit it, uh, in, in the cul-de-sac. <laughs> so to speak, but, uh, with all the kids, I know everybody. Right. I, <laughs> One time I lit some stuff that I bought, it was in Kentucky or somewhere on the, on the way home. And I put it in the middle of the cul-de-sac. And by the time the thing was over, you know, all of the kids were all sitting at, at the edge of the cul-de-sac when I lit yeah. it. And by the time that thing was done, everybody was in their houses because it oh, was like, it was, it was, a big it was daddy, too much. Yeah. It was too yeah. much. We, uh, I have a little personal tradition of, uh, you know, so I, I have different music that I, I listen to for different holidays. So, of course, you know, Fourth of July is, uh, you know, the 1812 Overture or whatever. And so yeah. I, I had done that. And just at the end with the cannons and everything going off, we've done it then. Like, just started lit with the background. And it was like a very, it, it, it's an awesome thing. But a lot of times, you know, people don't like Tchaikovsky. By the way, fun fact, um, the uh, Carnegie Hall. When Carnegie Hall opened, the first, uh, the first, I guess, show that they did was Tchaikovsky. It was Tchaikovsky doing Tchaikovsky in Carnegie? Isn't that cool? As opposed Carnegie. to Tchaikovsky doing Van Halen, right? That's I mean, I mean Tchaikovsky's <laughs> only going to do. How did you get Van Halen? That was a good one. I mean, you grabbed that one. There's really only anywhere. a few degrees of separation, if you think yeah, about it, that, between Tchaikovsky that, and, and Van Halen. Very cool. Well, you know, I, we need some, uh, you know, culture on this show. And so that's why I'm <laughs> okay. bringing it up. It gets going. There. Do you know who I, 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 I uh, emailed today? And I put out a call out to come on the show. Tchaikovsky. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. He's running for president. Okay. I figure, why wouldn't you want to come on the show? Anyway, he couldn't make it, but I'm still working oh, it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But good news. In his stead, I'm searching for all the other people in America. <laughs> I found someone with both culture and expertise and smarts and an all around good guy who's going to teach us all how to earn more money in our consulting practice. He's a great guy. I love this. I, I'd love to introduce him for everybody. So without any further ado, my new best friend, Monsieur Jean-Christophe Laurent. Yay! <laughs> 
Thank you, guys. Thank you, Dan, for the invitation. Yes. Nice well, you know, I pride myself on my introductions. So how did I do? You did it well. Perfect. Okay. Jean-Christophe, I like it, the way you yeah. pronounced it. Yes, yeah, so jean -Christophe. Well, I saw, I, what, what do your friends call you? A JC. JC. Yeah, so, yeah, and so when I first, Chris Stone, when I first met him, I, you know, hey, what do I want to call you? And and so, I, you know, I don't know, you know, being Jewish, whatever it's about. Is it fair for me? Is it blasphemous for me to call him Jesus Christ <laughs> with, with the JC yeah. thing? Or yeah, is that like it? Yeah, it, JC is better. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I would say it's not really blasphemous. It's just incorrect. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Good. So, uh, with JC, uh, you and I, how did we meet? Well, we meet at uh, Air UMC in 2020. You were having a, a speech on a coaching session ah. um, with uh, many folks. And that's how we met. And I bought, I bought your book and we had a session together. And um, I discovered your food of energy, many enthusiastic advice on a really sales professional. And then I started to follow you on LinkedIn mainly, all your energizer. And I have to say that uh, you helped me many times uh, because wow, it's back and forth in terms of energy. And when I listen to your videos, it gives me a lot of empowerment and energy. And thank you, Dan, for that. Thank you a lot. Oh, so now everybody who's watching will know how to get on the show, Chris Dunn. Right. It's that simple. Yeah, just, just dot the I. Dot the, yeah, uh, dot the right. I. Yeah. You just got to do that stuff. Well, that's excellent. Well, the, the thing is, uh, I, I met you. We had our little session. And I found out that uh, you could do certain consulting with, with, uh, with a certain size company. And then there's a whole nother size company uh, in the hundreds of millions or billions that also needs the same stuff that most consultants don't know how to acquire. And you work in that world, do you not? Exactly. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, so and how, it, does it really it, translate? Yeah, in fact, if you look at your business, then at what you're doing at help, helping sales team, uh, your pitch, the way you present it, it's the same for small business owners. They are encountering the same issues as large ones. And it's the same with what I do. I come from big companies. I've been working in, in mid-sized companies and they all have the same kind of issues that we can solve. So well, that's what when I you was say, uh, we were discussing that. Well, when you say mid-sized company, what does a mid-sized company mean to you? So it's it's a good question. Uh, in the U.S., a mid-sized company starting at uh, maybe uh, one one hundred million dollar, it's a mid-sized to uh, uh, and a big company is really with a lot of subsidiaries, complexity, uh, international. Uh, presence, big firms. Got it. Well, do you find that? Uh, I, don't you like to crystal on the way you sip subsidiaries? Do you find uh, that that's an asset uh, that you have a nice uh, foreign accent here in the States? Because uh, to me, it makes you sound smarter. Yeah, yeah maybe. Uh, and and thank you for that. I think it's an asset. I mean, the same time, it's a challenge. Really, it's a challenge because uh, uh, even though Americans, uh, they uh, really focus their energy to really understand me correctly, sometimes it's kind of a barrier as well that I need to overcome um, and, uh, and I need to double down the effort to create value. So that's it can be a plus and and a, and a minus as well yeah so it makes you better so so what when you get into a company and this is really interesting to me because there's a whole world of coaches and consultants out there mm. um who are good um but really just don't have the chance to get into these uh, into these firms so what what kind of problems do you solve 
So, um, so at larger. Menon, we, uh, it's a consulting firm and we are answering the, the so I'm giving solutions to the main question is why transformation projects are failing in companies. Because as you know, 65% of large project of transformations in companies are failing. And, and we are being created to answer and to reduce this number of, uh, of um, unsuccessful project. And well, we, what's an example of a project? Okay, so we play in three main areas. So uh, IT efficiency, business operations, and finance streamlining. So let me give you an example of project we can help uh, succeed. So um, companies are having big projects, for example, ERP transformation, post-merger integration, um, big processes to, implement, to, to improve and to change, uh, lacking leadership. So they need expertise and consulting uh, and we provide three services. We can diagnose a situation uh, to explain them and to provide recommendations. Mm -hmm. So that's the first uh, thing that you see at the top. So it can be a diagnosis of a critical process that goes uh, throughout many teams inside the organization. So we interview the people, uh, we, we map the process, the steps, and we help them to uh, to provide recommendations uh, based on our best practice, and then uh, we will help them to find uh, to 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 correct that. The second one is execute transformation. So it's more okay. The project is decided. So what do we do? So they are having project to execute. Either it's the project is already in a bad situation, or they are lacking program leadership. So then we jump and we drive the program for them. We structure it. We manage the implementation and the change. So, and they call us when they are lacking expertise and program leadership to, uh, to succeed this project. So as I was sharing, the kind of project is a post-merge integration, a customer experience, uh, AP automation, all that is related to operations IT. And what about in what about internal stuff like just for their company? Let's say they want to improve their own onboarding process or something. Exactly. So uh, it's it's a good point. So customer onboarding is when they sign a new a new customer in complex companies. Uh, the customer has to go through many steps to really be completely onboarded, and those steps can last. 60 days, 80 days, 100 days. And during this onboarding phase, there is no money uh, arriving to the, um, uh, to the client. So the faster the onboarding is, so the, when you shrink the time and you accelerate the onboarding, the faster uh, you um, sell your services. So we help reducing this time on automating it. Ah, oh, that's and, and you could do that for when you're onboarding employees as well. Exactly, you exactly. Shorten that time before they're productive. Exactly, exactly. But uh, for um, it's more we we do not play on the HR more on really business operations uh, for large client, large onboarding, yeah, um, and complex uh, onboarding cases for manufacturing. Um, uh, professional services, uh, and complex product onboarding. Ah, so, well, so in, 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 how long does this take? To, to help an uh, onboarding pro project? Yeah. Oh, well, it, can, it, can, it can help to diagnose and to improve. Diagnose can, can last one or two months. We, we, we jump on the teams, we analyze the steps, we provide recommendations in maybe a month and then after we help to perform the change 
Uh, well, so uh, so let me ask you this, because uh, this is what it, the people want to know. It kind of makes sense. Once you have one account, you can use that account as a referral base, and it can help you get more and more, and you mm -hmm. and you bounce off. But how do you get that first like big Mac Daddy account? How do you get that first big guy? Or how did you get your first big guy? That's exactly what you are showing right now. We 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 have to demonstrate all the time our value to be there, to be on the top of their mind, to, to be the one that will help them solve their problem. That's how we sell. So we are on LinkedIn, on events, we creating bonding on rapport, uh, we demonstrate our value, um, and, and we, we show, as you can see on the website, there are two parts. There are the articles that, in which we provide tips, advice, and how to, to perform and solve a problem. Yes, here you can see. Um, are you allowed to tell us some of your accounts or are they all like, do you no, do it's military? Kind of confidential. Uh, oh, everything's kind of... Yeah, it's kind of, uh, um, but it's mid-sized to large uh, clients most of the time. So how do you get in? Let's say somebody wants to start doing business with that, with those companies. Like how how does somebody get in? Do you just need to know somebody? It's so you way. start with the, you start with the diagnosis, I imagine. No, but, no, no. Uh, okay, not all the time. You can start. It's like depend on the need. If they have uh, a need for diagnosis, you start by a diagnosis. If they contact you for a project in pain, you start with the execution. Um, so last month we were called for a le leadership need. They, uh, one of their uh, general manager was leaving the company and they needed someone for a period of time uh, to jump and to manage a part of their organization. So we, um, we performed that mission for them. Uh, so we can, we can jump into your, the diagnosis or we can start by the implementation or the leadership phase there is no real order got it all right yeah so you meet them where they are and you just go get it. Exactly. Uh, how the heck how did you get into this line of work well um, you know in fact i have always been doing that all my career leading well, large where programs. are you from by the way where, where are you from brazil uh, <laughs> so i i'm from france um I've made all my Korean friends um, in uh, as an executive role and uh, as a consultant in big firms and mid-sized firms. And I, I could see that there is kind of a disconnect between the big consulting firms, what they provide in terms of recommendations on what they, they, they do and the operational needs. Ah. And then I said, okay, we need to be positioned in the middle, meaning that what we recommend, it's something that we leave, we know it works because the team I work with are coming from the, the executive on leadership. So they were set on the chair of the clients that we are helping. So what we recommend, it's not coming from book, books or best, best practices that are, I would say, good for everybody, but really coming from the experience on the field. So that's why we are, and I name us as a strategy execution firm. We are here to make it happen inside and within your organization, not to give you slides on PowerPoint and then good luck for the implementation. We is make that, things done. Is that what happens? Yes. Oh, yes. Like the, the, like the big uh, consulting firms will go ahead and do that. They'll make you a big presentation and then uh, give you the book and then you walk away with it. Exactly. Many times, many times. <laughs> yes. Because, so, you know, yeah, I will explain you why. Yeah, please. Because they are, those big, these big firms have great competencies in terms of strategy. They know the market, they can guide the company. And so uh, the CEO called them to help them on their strategy direction and things. But after, so they can give some really great advice, 
But after, when you start to really make things done on the field, uh, you have to go below the CEO, C-level, VPs, a director to make things done. And that's where these strategic firms are not so comfortable. I because see. one, they are really expensive in terms of rights. Two, that's not their forte because it's consulting guys. They are not hands on. So they, they don't go deeper. And that's where we jump. We look, we take the report, we structure it down into executive steps. And then we say, mm, this recommendation don't think it's feasible. What do you think? So we discuss with the directors, VPs, and then we say, okay, this one, we take it. This one, we postpone it. And then we define a plan, an execution plan that is feasible time frame, And then we execute it with the company. That's what we do. And then and that's why we done. are execution firm. Gosh. Yeah. You know, Chris Stone calls me an executioner too. You know, I, I kill. I don't. I That's kill just, the moment. It, yeah, it's, <laughs> this is uh, it's it, the bad j uh, dad jokes are coming, uh, JC. Well, I, I love that. I love the execution piece uh, as as a part of what you're doing. It's not just, uh, hey, thanks for your money. Here's your report. Have fun, um, and uh, hopefully, you, hopefully, you make it through. But I would imagine that you being able to do this and successfully, like you have, you need to surround yourself with a great team. Yes. And so uh, talk, talk a little bit about when someone approaches your company. Um, I mean, obviously, you, you being here on Dan Jordan, you are the face. But, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's like it takes a village, right, to, uh, yeah, yeah, we, to build exactly. this. So I have, I have a, uh, a tremendous team uh, uh, around me. And we work by practice. Each of the practice leaders I work with have a, an expertise in which of the three domains that we have, either in operations, IT, and finance. You can see here on the right, Andy uh, is uh, our IT practice leader. He has 20 years of uh, IT leadership on large transformations. So he's our expert in uh, solving uh, IT technology, uh, large, uh, large transformations on these domains. You can see Carol uh, in the middle, our uh, finance practice. So she has been a, a CFO and a finance leader, finance leader for years, and she helps companies to really streamline their finance processes. So account payable, account receivable, accounting, to automate and to remove all the blocks, of the issues they are encountering. So um, if you go down, other members are uh, helping on business operations and professional services. You have David is really more working on the sales pipeline optimization. Uh, Steve is really an expert in professional services. So if you have problems with your portfolio uh, of services in automation, he can help you. Mm. Eric Dutong is just joining the team. Uh, is really a senior advisor in MA post merger integration and really uh, a, a top consultant in these domains. So, um, and you have um, uh, Jay, uh, um, really uh, experienced program leader in IT. Uh, Terence uh, is really helping uh, sell some technical engineer. And Tom is more on the operations. Uh, to um, go and to promote a lean uh, optimization. So you can see um, nine consultants in operations, IT, and finance. That's where we play. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And you started this. You started this uh, on your own. This is your own. What 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 brought you to America? By the way, I mean, did you know about Chris Stone? Was that the thing? <laughs> yes, that that's you, Dan. I heard that's about you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I bought some tickets and uh, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. yeah, adventure. I've always been in love of the United States um, and my wife too, and my two teenagers, boys. So when I had an opportunity with a client, um, I said, okay, let's go and let's take on the business in the US. It's an adventure. 
I would say a uh, personal yeah. business and it's a great journey. Mm. And I moved here six months before the COVID hit. Wow. So I had a right. tough, tough moment. Sure. It's, it's not, a, 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 I would say, a perfect story. Oh, what a successful right. story. No, 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 it's not the way it is. It's tough and it's still tough. Um, and what, uh, what did you learn? I'm sorry to interrupt. What did you learn, JC, through COVID? Um, you know, just coming over six months later, boom, the uh, the world turned upside down. What do, uh, what did you learn uh, that may have helped you uh, as to to where you are uh, are, are at now? Mm. I think I learned to be grateful. Mm. Ooh, look at that. that! That was unexpected. <laughs> Yeah, to be grateful of the life that we are living, we are fragile and uh, everybody needs help. We all need help. So uh, that's what I learned the most. And what is the most important? It's not uh, your money or your stuff. It is your health, your family, your friends, uh, the value you provide to people and be a helper. That's, that's what I learned really um, and I was losing a lot of money during the COVID and like many millions of Americans and around the world. Okay. Mm. I survived, mm. you know, so that's what I learned. It's, yeah. um, whatever are your plans on everything in business, it's only a part of things that you have to accomplish in life. That's really something that rose from the COVID for me. Mm. That's fantastic. That's great. So was you, is your wife American? No, she's French. No, your wife is French too. Everybody's French. So where, where are the boys? Uh, they are, uh, one is back in France. He's uh, studying a pastry to become a pastry chef. Oh, oh awesome. really? Yes. Oh, yes. that's awesome. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so excited by that. But if you've ever been to France, Christone, you've been to France, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Last year. I mean, last those pet pieces of days, oh, my. It's like, it's, it's like a museum. It's beautiful. Awesome. You go there, all the colors. Oh, my gosh. I love that. I gained 15 pounds on that trip easily. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the food is great. And, so uh, he's and the be second a, one, a, uh, Remy, is uh, studying at Kennesaw State University oh, the in house. mathematics. And he's entering in, uh, in the senior year. Mm. Well, uh, I, I, you know, they, uh, let me ask you this. As far as the, uh, the bread in France, do you like the, the uh, let's say you get the uh, facile. Do you like the ends or do you like the middle? Uh, people are very end or middle people. Um, what, what I like the most is the, is the scheme of it. Yes. Whatever the position on the bread. Yeah, you know. the crust. Yeah, the crust. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I, Thanks, I Dan, it. for making this the most uncomfortable part of the conversation. Like we appreciate the that. The, <laughs> what? The crust. Yes. That's, but that's cool. okay. No, oh, that's good. That, that's good. Uh, that's good TV right here. So, <laughs> um, how did you, you and your wife? You've been here before, though. You've been to America before you moved here. Yeah. yeah like so. on vacation or what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how have you found the states? Um, different than you expected one living here mm -hmm. rather than a, as well, a as a visitor. Oh yes, it's a it's a complete different experience. Complete different experience. Really? Yes. Um, so I, I, we 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 can talk about it. Uh, we can talk about it for hours. But to be short, what I like in the U.S. Uh, is this encouragement and. Uh, helping mentality um, afford to people that really are in action. It's an action oriented um, country. Um, and I love that. It, it gives yeah. you energy to create, to make things done, to try your stuff. Um, mm. it's, but it's brutal. In the US, it's much more brutal than in Europe. You can fail badly and succeed extremely well, but it's brutal. There is no, uh, we'd say, safety net. Yeah. So it moves you it, a lot. You have to, yeah. to move your butt. Otherwise, so there's a, you notice it is a noticeable difference than the European uh, country. Yes. Uh, in, in France, they don't see 
how many help, how many safety net they have. Mm. Uh, and they are not grateful for that, always complaining. In the US, you have to, to be good. You have to strive, you have to compete. It's a hustle. You're hustling mm. all the time. But uh, when you are a competition player, when uh, you, you like that, it's fun. It's a great area to play on. Mm. Oh, that's cool. So are you watching the tour? No, no, no. No, that's not your thing? <laughs> I tell you, when my when my dad was alive, you know that was our special time. We all three weeks in July was just a big time for us, and so oh, yeah, every yeah. day we'd get together. So I I liked it. I actually, and since he's died, I I really haven't. I don't know what's going on anymore. Though it is beautiful watching him going through the mountains. Yeah, it's crazy, and, and it's everything. a great promotion for France. The beauty yeah. of of, oh, yeah. uh, of the countryside, about all the small villages. Uh, it's just crazy. So yeah. um, if you have never been to France, uh, book a ticket, rent a car, travel everywhere. You will love it. Mm. Yes, that's true. And JC, don't forget, and try the bread skin. Always. <laughs> oh, it's that's a great name for a band. <laughs> yeah. too. Um, so JC, I'm I, so we we walk we walk through your your team. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know, transition from uh, the Tour de France uh, and bread into uh, into actually why we're here talking about your company. But did you were you, did you build that team before you came to the U.S. in 2019 or 2020? Did you build that team when you arrived here in the states? And is that team somewhat local to the Atlanta area? Are they are they are they global? Is it is it remote? Uh, how uh, how did you go about? building your team yeah. and uh, sort of like extrapolating on the vision that you have? Yes, uh, it's a great question. So I built this team from scratch. When I arrived, I was alone here. Mm. Most of the guys that you see are in the Atlanta area, uh, except Eric is in New York. But most of the guys are in Atlanta. Um, what they have in common and is first thing that, that they have competencies in the three blocks that we play on. And the second thing is that they are experienced leaders who want to give back. They want to play in, in an area on becoming successful consultant. And what attracted them to work with me and to work with Penon is that they are not uh, positioned in a customer like that. They are onboarded. They are trained. Uh, we built an offering with them and we support uh, and coach them through the different steps of, the, uh, of their journey as a consultant and practice leader at Pinot. And if you look at all the profiles, they are tough guys, former VP, C-level executives, and they want to give back. They want to uh, play and transfer their knowledge and their expertise as a consultant. And it's not an easy journey to do because you have to know what, uh, what are you're good at, what to learn, how to sell yourself and services, how to manage the, the administration and everything. And I provide a complete framework for them and a support to give them confident, confidence to uh, deliver their services. And that's the journey that I made at 35 years old. When I was an executive, I, I moved uh, to a big four, a Deloitte Consulting, and the journey was tough for me. Mm. It took me two years to be comfortable. And I said, I live an, ex I lived an experience that I would like to share and to give back as well and to help guys to succeed this, this transformation because it's it's not easy it's complex and i support them uh, throughout this journey to become successful consultant well that's and the companies that they consult with uh, i imagine they they create relationships with them which can either go two ways one way is to get more you know you see more opportunities that you can make more efficient uh, but secondly, do you ever have the situation where those companies tried to hire them away? Of course. Of course. That's their choice. 
uh, we are uh, we are not I would say committed for life. It's uh, we are crossing our journey together, and uh, it's yeah. like everything. <laughs> so uh, if they if they find a better place elsewhere, they they go. If they are loving the experience, they stay. Uh, if they are successful, you know, everybody has his own project in life, and that's what I respect when we work together is that do you want to really be at 200 percent giving everything do you want to work only three days a week do you want to be um, delivering these kind of offerings on this one so it's a question of list listening finding compromise um and selling and delivering well that's great so you yeah. so what i'm hearing is you don't do the actual hands-on labor or the, the work anymore, the consulting anymore. Uh, that's what I tried to do this year. Yes, definitely. To really focus on the sales, prospecting, hiring, and supporting the team. Yes, and, so uh, they get a, 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 full, a full leader tier. And, and you actually start acting more like the companies that you're consulting with. So you're practicing what you preach. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is excellent. So if somebody wanted to get started in the business or somebody wants to be a consultant, um, what would you suggest? Would you suggest they go the route where you go into a big firm first and learn what you're doing there and then move on? Um, there is no, I would say, only one recipe. It's a great question, then. I think what I recommend them is to not make this journey alone and be lost in a big firm without support. It's a recipe for failure, definitely. So be sure that when they jump, they are supported by coaching, by senior guys, not alone because it's a big change for them. Yeah. They have to learn all the consulting skills, uh, how to behave, how to deliver, how to synthesize, how to uh, communicate. It's a big shift. So alone, really complex. So that's why you can see many solo entrepreneurs that they try by themselves and they fail because ah. it's tough alone. So surrounded and be coached by experienced guys like mm. me and other members of the team, raise up your uh, success rate a lot. So you're you're saying that let's say let's say someone's uh, starting out in one of those firms or in a different firm or whatever, uh, you recommend that they on their own. I would recommend this too on their own. Uh, spend some of their own money get themselves a career coach or a consulting coach to assist them on their journey to grow their own practice. This is a very entrepreneurial minded type of thing for a yeah. Frenchman like you. Yeah, exactly. That's what I recommend. <laughs> that is good. And do you guys do that? Do you offer that service? Yes. I offer that service to all of my team members. It's, it's in the package. Uh, and I created a, a Penon University training plan that I built when it was the COVID. <laughs> oh. So, and I built a complete training plan for all the consultants um, on uh, what are the differences between a consultant and an employee, how to manage with some role play and some cases. And as well, I trained them on our cell methodology on how to perform a diagnosis, how to drive programs as an external contractor and everything. So there is a complete training plan that I propose. Oh, wow. Well, so if someone's yeah. a consultant, they need to talk to you. Yes. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> I mean, that. <laughs> yes, 
Um, I love, I love, that's like the best answer ever. Um, yeah, I love, I love that because I think a lot of people, um, even at the spot that you're at JC, when they've built a consultancy like this, it's like they're focused on the business, the business and, and the profits and stuff. And you're working on the people or, or, or leading, I should say the people. And so, you know, a lot of what we talked about today and working with businesses, you say are, are, confidential, right? You can't really say, well, you know, I worked with company X and we did this, that, and the other, but is there a, is there a story? I get the sense that you are someone that really loves to help people, but also help businesses because, you know, businesses have people within there. Is there maybe an example that of, you know, without naming any names, I understand a lot of this is confidential. I'd love to be able to hear how, uh, maybe someone on your team or you helped someone build something and, and uh, you know, sort of transform their business. Yeah, sure. So I will give you an, um, an, uh, an example. So uh, a manufacturing company was having difficulties with their inventory management report. Okay. So uh, all the figures that were reported by the finance were false. So they couldn't manage and anticipate their purchasing, what was the cost of goods sold. And they tried by themselves to find what was the reason and they couldn't. So uh, they asked us to investigate. So it's a diagnosis on this one. So we diagnosed uh, this inventory process. So we went through all the steps and mapped the systems looked at all the teams that were, um, were involved, look at the data, and then uh, we found what was the problems and recommended some adjustment uh, in the systems, in some roles of teams, and then the light came. So uh, that's uh, a concrete example on how to unblock and to streamline process uh, for, for a large company. And it's still working now. Yes. Yeah. Of course. And people people don't understand. They get in the weeds, right, of their own business, yeah. and they don't understand. They need to come in, have someone else come in and pull it apart from a different view, and in order to to diagnose something like that. And I think yeah. what per, what keeps people from hiring consultants and people to to do that? Do they think they can just do it themselves? Maybe it's yeah. they don't have the budget for it. Um, is it more of a they don't want to think about it until the problem happens and then they have to figure out how to get out of it as opposed to being proactive to avoid those kinds of things with a, with a consultant. What keeps you people got from the answer hiring? already to your question. That's exactly the point you mentioned. Exactly this one. Um, the pain has to be really hard for them to call consultant most of the time because they tried by themselves. Uh, they said, oh, it's not important. Uh, so when they call consultant, it's most of the time in an emergency mode mm. because it's expensive and it's kind as well of, um, uh, um, I don't want them to come in and, and so on. So when they call us, uh, it's really when the pain is high. Mm. So either they discovered by themselves that the pain was high, or we help them to show that if they don't do something right now in six months, it's going to be a big mess and it will be too late for them to correct it. So then they say, oh, you're right. Let's do it. And then we do it. And after they say, oh, it was good. So, so in fact, it's, it's just a decision to to do it, that is the harder. And, and what you describe as the, the blockers are exactly these ones, exactly. Well, so who are, you, who are you dealing with? Who calls you in? Is it the CEO that calls you in and then says work with these people? Or does it go from the project manager who says, you know, uh, they're, they're pulling their hair out, we need help, and then they send it up? Which way does so, it happen? Um, so for large companies, it's not the CEO. It's more at the VP level, SVP, VP, okay. or senior di director. They have a PNL. They have a, they are in charge of programs or or processes. 
so that's the population who, who call who call us so um coo or vp of operations uh, cio or vp of it cfo uh, oh, so these guys and or director of um accounting or fpna yeah a lot that's of companies have a lot of companies have you know consulting budgets to do this though they people they, they hire them all the time you have a big fan in vincent do you know vincent uh, is he a is friend it, of yours yeah You're yeah a vincent, great leader he's, too. Uh, he's a he's a general manager uh in daxer uh, a logistic uh big firm and we have been working together um so and um, and thank you vincent for your for your support <laughs> <Love that. laughs> Everybody has a Vincent. That's good. You got that going on. <laughs> so, uh, what's next? So, would you, you know, a, a a job or a company brought you here? Could another job, or do you have any like, you know, uh, gold star companies in your mind that you think you'd love to work in or love to help them out? Do you have any targets like dream clients? Or what would make a dream client? What's a perfect uh, new client for you? A client in need to really succeed their programs. They are big programs, so large firms. Um, they, for example, acquired a new company, so they signed a deal, and they are struggling at making these companies work as one. So they need consulting uh, guys like us so the dream would be that they hire us to help them in all the areas of where we are good at at the operations in it and in finance if we have a client with a big project we can help them in these uh, three blocks uh, to succeed so that's an ideal a client in which we yeah. can leverage the team as, as a team Instead of one guy to the right, one guy to the left, we can provide and help large projects with the team uh, we we built. I see. And do you work alongside their project managers? Because I imagine each. Yes. yes. Okay. So you yeah. work alongside those people. You don't replace those people. Yeah, yeah. Work... In, in, as program managers, we can do. Uh, we can lead the program for them, or we can play. Uh, a role as what we call a PMO, which is the guy that will coordinate everything, but he's not the decision maker. So we can be, play the, the two roles. I see. All right. Well, then help help me then. Help a company. Here's a company, uh, a manufacturing company. They're doing well. They're making a lot of money. They're, you know, they're selling a lot of product, but don't really have cash flow. They they just can't mm -hmm. figure out why they're not doing the cash flow, why they we have nothing there. And, you know, they're still struggling, even though they're selling a lot and they don't just don't know where the money's going. What are some things they can do to, you know, step one, aside from hiring you or someone like step one that they can do to get started? I, you, you snapped. And so now I'm snapping. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, we will, uh, uh, Asks ask them how does he drive the company? What are the dashboard, the, the key indicators? Um, and look at the finance books. Okay, where are the spendings? Uh, how, and then compare that to the best practices of the same kind of company. And then we will identify, mm, I think there is a problem on this part of the organization first and then this second one. So we will try to identify um, one, two, three blocks in which we have to dip down. Then we will go deeper and uh, identify uh, some uh, area in which we can improve the way they operate, reduce their cost, um, wow. and um, uh, so that's how yeah. we're gonna do. And get more customers. You know, sometimes uh, yeah. of course, uh, yeah. get get more customers. It's uh, Jeez. Everybody's always afraid of getting more. See, I, people think that I'm not, a, you know, a green guy, but I am. I'm all for green growth. I want all organic food, all organic growth. You want to get that extra stuff. 
Yeah, this is more your stuff then. Yeah. Uh, it's to help them really uh, be great at sales. Mm. So and, that's, and, what, that's what you need to do when you get in these big companies. You have to say, hey, first of all, you need a podcast. I got a guy, Chris Stone, who'll hook you up. And then uh, we got to help your sales team. Uh, let me bring on the, the DJ as one of the consultants. And we'll exactly. hook these guys up. Exactly. That's part of the recommendations that we will provide for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well that's true because that is that is an important thing i you know people tend to go one way or the other either you go new business growth or you or some people just dig deep into uh the companies that they have you know land and expand and keep doing that but really it should be both yes of course and and, oh, yes. and what one counterbalances the other uh being a good outbound prospector it makes you a better salesperson to grow inside the company. It's it's the same skills. You keep on perfecting your message. You yes. keep on perfecting and and being a, a a keen observer of patterns of of, of problems that, that that they may not see yet because you've had all this other experience and to share it with them. A big challenge people have is sharing people. With problems, a lot of uh, uh, software design or website designers do this. They'll they don't use these words, but they'll contact you in essence and say, "Hey, your website sucks. I can fix it." Which, yeah. which is you know the wrong way. You have to figure out a tactful way to uh, to help them in, improve their stuff, and that's stuff that you train your your consultants to do as well. That's something we need to be better at, definitely. <laughs> uh, and uh, we will get in touch then. To, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, okay. We got to do that. So um, you talked several times about journeys um, mm -hmm. that you've done and your adventures and your, your, your changes of career and all this. I get the feeling that your, your journeys and adventures are not done. What... Mm -hmm. What what are some of the dreams out there in the future? Yeah, you seem to be a goal oriented man. My, I have two missions. Uh, the first one is really to serve the maximum of clients to reduce their pain. That's the first one, and the second one is to serve uh, my team and. The, the, the consultants I work with to become great, successful, and a happy consultant. Because it's a tough business. It's not so easy to become a great consultant, to leave it the right way. So that's my two core main missions at Penal Partners and as a person. Oh, well, that's, that's good. And again, your family must uh, appreciate that as well for them. Do you, does your boy make you good food, by the way? Oh, yeah. Yes. The, <laughs> and, and my wife. Oh, and your <laughs> and your wife. Oh, she, 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 she's watching. So. Uh, oh, is she? Thank you, <laughs> What What is her name? Uh, Carol. 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 Yeah. Carol. Hi, Carol. Thanks for joining. Yeah. We've been waiting for you. You have Carol. a wonderful husband, and according to Vincent, a tremendous leader, a great yeah. leader, and I can tell. <laughs> You know, like, you know, one of the reasons why we do this uh, and everyone who's watching, believe it or not, this is JC's first live show. And, uh, you know, so snaps for you, uh, JC, this you did a you've done a tremendous job. And I can tell. And the reason why we do these live is because this is what you get. So when you call uh, Penan, how do I say it? Penon, you did it. Penon. And when you call Penon, um, this is the kind of uh, leadership. Uh, this is the kind of leader of, of a company. Uh, it's not just any old consultancy that's going to just take your money and send you a PowerPoint. Uh, this is somebody that's going to understand your business and surrounds himself with a great team who obviously uh, loves being a part of it. So I, lo I love when, we've, when we're able to have somebody like you uh, on live that's, that's uh, unafraid to just kind of show themselves and, and uh, you know, what they're about. And it's, uh, it's really uh, refreshing and rewarding to see you. And look who is in the house here. <laughs> This must be Carol, right? Logging in as you on YouTube. 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, and you you said okay. that. I want to pile on with that a little bit, uh, Chris, because yeah, you said, you sure, know, he comes please. out here unafraid. I don't know that he's unafraid, but he did it anyway, which yeah, is exactly. a true match of courage. And I love that. And so, yeah, that's what people, people need to realize that. Don't be afraid. And I guess we could, if you have any other thing, do you have anything to sign off with uh, first, JC? Any, any last bit of advice or any tips you might want to give anyone, either someone wants to become a consultant or someone thinking maybe I need to hire one? Exactly. Uh, so uh, in, I think you, I like what you said. It's not uh, that I was not afraid. I jumped. And it's the same for consulting. Don't be afraid to call us. Have these difficulties. How can you help me? We can uh, try to, to define something for you. And it's the same for someone wanting to become a consultant and not being alone in the journey. Uh, we would be glad to talk as well. Yes, and that's how it is in business. I, I think the thing that I'm getting most from this and that I appreciate most is that kind of small business mentality, that entrepreneurial kind of drive uh, to make your job really just another income source. You're building yourself as a life and, you're, and your, your mission is to help others and lead a complete, a complete life. You're just a helper. And uh, all you need now is more customers. And all anybody needs out is more customers. Mm. The more people, the more you serve, the more you will earn. And when you have the right heart and the right tools, you got the future is wide open for you. Chris Stone, thank you so much once again. Is this? Is, I know, uh, uh, JC, this is your first, but this is going to be the most professional podcast <laughs> you'll be on in the next 10 years he's constantly he lives that kind of continuous and never-ending improvement type of man constantly yeah. changing making things better for everyone he comes in touch with which is the same thing that you do jc so pleased to have met you i'll see you later in person mm -hmm. stick around when i say after i say goodbye here for a little while um we appreciate you coming, making us your first. I hope you had a good time. And for yeah, you uh, out there, remember, the, uh, the, the DJ Live is open for you, too. All you have to be is great. You're the best. I'm the Dij. Let's go get them today.